Um, now, coming to the main um, um, sort of exponent, let's say, the first main exponent of Buddha nature uh, theories uh, from the Karmakaju tradition would be Third Karmapa, you, who you brought up earlier. Um, a lot of people think that Third Karmapa is a Shentongpa, you know, somebody who argued for the other emptiness, Buddha nature right. being empty of vicious stains and not being empty of itself. But then Karma Parangjung Dorji also actually um, expounded something um, which combines both emptiness and luminosity, isn't it? He, he didn't uh, espouse the same kind of Shentong as Dolpopa, for instance. So can you shed more light on that? Uh, you have done a lot of work on Rangjung Dorji. Yeah, I think it's pretty striking that I mean, first of all, the word Shantong appears in no writing of Rangjung Dorje that we know of. Uh, and there is this story about that he met Del Popa and so on and so forth. And uh, so, of course, you can classify the third Kamapa as Shantong if you want, but it has to be clear that there's many different types of Shantong. So if you classify a third Kamapa, as you say, as Shantong, mm -hmm. it should be very clear that he's not saying the same things as Del Popa. Um, so, but he clearly also subscribes to the disclosure model of Buddha nature, which means the qualities are there, they just need to be revealed. There's no actual new development of previously not existing qualities. And he also says clearly that Buddha nature is not just mere emptiness. But in his presentation, he very skillfully combines actually the teachings on Buddha nature, Yogacara and Madhyamika. Also in terms of his quotes and mm. the whole way he presents it. So he also says Buddha nature is basically non-dual, non-conceptual wisdom, which is free of adventitious stains, which of course a classical Shantung presentation. He also says it's natural luminosity, all these things, not empty of its own wisdom nature, but then also he says very clearly that this cannot be pinpointed as being empty, not being empty, both or neither, which is very classical Madhyamika. And so one of the crucial things he also says that has become a hallmark of Kaji also in Mahamudra is, is the difference between samsara and nirvana is whether the nature of the mind, meaning Buddha nature, is realized or not. In other words, is recognized for what it is or not, which then was later attacked by Del Popa. Um, but then he also, that Kamapa also goes, subscribes to the Yogacara model of the eight consciousnesses, then becoming the four wisdoms of a Buddha and all that. Uh, and he says that in the final picture, all the great Indian masters, whether they're Yogacara or Madhyamika, they agree on this point as the correct view of all the yanas. So in Kamakaji, at least that Kamapa is definitely seen as the ultimate authority on Buddha nature. And I think pretty much everybody after him more or less followed this. Like Third Kamapa hasn't spelled mm -hmm. out maybe all the details that then somebody like the eighth Kamapa or Chairman Kongtrul did later, but he definitely gave the general picture. Mm. So you could say, if you want to um, call him Shantong, are... then it's a very balanced mm. form of Shantong. Like, as some people call it, non-exclusivist Shantong. Mm. Mm. Non-absolutist, can you say that as well? Because he proposes a union of emptiness and luminosity to describe yes. Buddha nature, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's all to that point that, you know, yes, the qualities of Buddha nature are there, but if there's even the slightest iota of reification or clinging or solidification, then that's not it. So mm -hmm. that element is very clear. Mm 